Hi, everybody. It's Jim Cornette here, former manager of the Midnight Express, former manager of champions in the WWF, the NWA, TNA, ROH, OVW, and everywhere else. And now I'm here to tell you that you're about to see a YouTube show the likes of which you've never seen before. It's called Reliving the War, where the Monday Night Wars of WWF and WCW will be compared and contrasted with each other head to head. Straight up, nose to nose and toes to toes for your viewing pleasure. This YouTube program will break all records for viewership in the history of the internet. It is probably already sold out as we speak. So stay tuned because if it comes up, that means you've been lucky enough to see the YouTube show Reliving the War. Welcome back to Reliving the War. This week, WWF Raw aired on Friday the 6th of September, while WCW Nitro took place on a Monday, as usual, the 2nd of September. Raw and Nitro didn't go head-to-head -head this week, but we're still going to compare both shows against each other to see which one was better. This is a special Championship Friday episode of Raw where Shawn Michaels will defend the WWF title against Goldust. The show features a set of taped matches from Wheeling, West Virginia, while WCW Nitro is live tonight from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Before we get started, let's check out the unopposed first hour of Monday Nitro. Tony and Larry recapped the last episode of Nitro. Remember, Ted DiBiase gave us a tease last week and we're unsure if he's NWO or if he's a horseman. The first match of the night featured Diamond Dallas Page taking on Alex Wright. Alex was trying to get a little revenge on behalf of Eddie and Chavo Guerrero, but a diamond cutter was enough to end the match. Has to be said again, but Page was getting great pops when performing his finisher, even though he was a heel. People just loved seeing the diamond cutter. Nick Patrick then gets interrogated once again by Mean Gene Okerlund. Gene says Patrick was a little slow in the previous match when Wright was in the driver's seat. And Patrick says that Mean Gene is responsible for stirring all this up. Nick's officiating has been reviewed consistently and he still has a job. So Nick stands by his recent actions while calling himself a good referee. Nick Patrick calls Mean Gene a liar and Nick says he'll continue to uphold the law in WCW. Robert Parker and Sherry then got interviewed by Okerlund and the Colonel has a present for Sherry. No, it isn't delicious KFC, it's a leather vest and some assless chops. The Colonel wants Sherry to cosplay as Shawn Michaels tonight. Sherry seems happy enough and Parker says Sherry will look great riding his prized Tennessee walking horse named John Henry. Harlem Hater without their managers when they take on Greg Valentine and Buddy Valentino. Yeah, Buddy Valentino. Don't know what favours were done there to get Buddy on Monday Nitro, but anyway, the Valentines or the Valentinos or whatever looked seriously limited in comparison to Harlem Heat. Booker picks up the win with a Harlem Hangover. During the match, Ted DiBiase was seen again and he took a seat in the audience. And after the match, it's announced that Harlem Heat will face the Nasty Boys at Fall Brawl. Sags and Nobs show up to attack Booker and Stevie. And Booker takes a spike pile driver before the show moves on. We're then transported back to Casa del Frosty Balls for more Glacier shenanigans. And it's just the same video package as last week. Why am I not surprised? Not much longer to wait now though, really. Only two weeks until Glacier makes his Nitro debut. Speaking of future episodes, next week will mark the first year of the Monday Night War being covered on Reliving the War. Keep in mind that I've done those unopposed shows as well and that's why we aren't at episode 52 yet or whatever it may be, but yeah, one whole year already done. And it feels like it's all been spent waiting on this frosty fucker to show up. 
Dean Malenko versus Chris Jericho next, and yeah, a good showing from these two, and the match was given a decent amount of time. Jericho got the win while keeping the overly exaggerated babyface stuff to a minimum. Y2J's moves inside the ring got him natural pops from the audience, and really, at this point, this was all he needed to do. During the match, Ted DiBiase left his seat, causing confusion for our commentary team. It's then announced that Super Kalo will challenge Rey Mysterio for the Cruiserweight title at Fall Brawl, and we get a video package showing off both men's high-flying movesets. So, the Alex Wright match was... it was okay, the Harlem Heat tag team match was pretty dreadful, and the Jericho vs Malenko match was good. Not a home run here at all, and not a lot to keep us hooked in, so the unopposed point goes to Raw this week. The Giant goes one on one with Brad Armstrong next on Monday Nitro while we have Hunter Hearst Hemsley vs Sid on Raw. Raw opens up with a 1996 pay per view style video package to hype up the upcoming Goldust vs Michaels main event. I'm not sure if anyone believed that Goldust would win the belt tonight, but seeing as it was on a Friday, I guess it made people wonder if something out of the ordinary would potentially happen, maybe. As Psycho Sid makes his way down to the ring, we see clips of Mr. Perfect stealing Hunter's valets over the past few weeks. Kevin Kelly says Hunter will be keeping an eye out for Perfect tonight. Kevin Kelly and Jim Ross are replacing Vince McMahon and Jerry Lawler tonight, by the way. This is a first round match in the Intercontinental Title Tournament. Hunter starts the match off with a top wrist lock, but Sid just pushes his opponent right out of the ring. The Greenwich Blue Blood gets back inside the ropes and Sid hits a shoulder block, leading to Hunter again going to the outside. We're getting a lot of stalling here. Sid hits a big boot and Hunter takes a beating in the corner. An Irish whip leads to Helmsley hitting a neckbreaker, and Triple H does his little pose in the ring, giving fans a reason to boo. A knee drop from Helmsley gets delivered as his valet looks on. Triple H begins choking Big Sid, and another knee drop from Hunter gets followed up with a pin attempt. Sid powers out as if Hunter just done absolutely no damage whatsoever. The big man begins no selling his opponent's punches, and look at this, I just love Sid's punches. Every punch looks like a wild haymaker that could knock your head off. The future King of Kings gets nailed with a one handed choke slam, and look who shows up, it's Mr. Perfect himself. Helmsley gets nailed with a power bomb, and Sid wins our match. Kurt Hennig steals Hunter's guard once again, and the segment ends with Hunter following Perfect and his valet back up the ramp. This was a Psycho Sid TV match through and through. It wasn't a barn burner by any means, but the choke slam and the power bomb both looked incredibly devastating. The Giant vs Brad Armstrong then on Nitro. The match starts off with Armstrong sliding under the Giant's legs and we see two drop kicks, two very nice drop kicks. As expected, the Giant no sells everything. A waist lock gets broke up with the power of the Giant's ass. Armstrong then takes a few forearms to the chest and the Giant begins choking his opponent as a limousine is shown backstage. The commentators speculate that this could be Ric Flair or it could be the NWO. The Giant tosses Armstrong from one side of the ring to the other. Brad then tries to reverse a back body drop with a pin attempt, but the Giant just grabs poor Brad and Armstrong gets thrown down to the mat. This is an absolute squash match at this point. Brad gets thrown out of the ring, but he manages to bring the Giant down across the top rope. A flying dropkick manages to stun the big man, but when Brad tries to run at his opponent in the corner, the Giant grabs him by the neck. We see a choke slam, and it's all over. The Giant wins via pinfall. The point goes to WWF Raw. No wrestling clinics on display on either show, but you'd be more entertained by watching Psycho Sid do his thing. Hollywood Hogan delivers a pre-taped promo next on Nitro while the WWF presents another IC title tournament match. It's Stone Cold Steve Austin vs Mark Merrow. Before the Raw match, we get an update from Ahmed Johnson. Dr. Joel Hackett says that Ahmed is doing better than before and there's a chance he could come back at 100%. Ahmed says he's coming back one way or the other. 
As Austin makes his way down to the ring, Jim Ross says that he's going to break the biggest wrestling story of his broadcasting career later on tonight. Shocking would be one way to put it. Brian Pullman joins the commentary team and Brian has some big news too. Brian says he has some information about the WWF return of Bret the Hitman Hart. As the match gets underway, Pillman implies that Bret Hart will be at In Your House Mind Games. He doesn't flat out say he's going to be there, but it's heavily implied. The winner of this match then will face Owen Hart in the next round of the tournament. Mero gives a clean break in the corner, but Stone Cold taunts his opponent instead of returning the favour. And Austin can't believe it when Mero punches him in the mouth. The two men trade hammerlocks before Austin brings Mero to the corner. Stone Cold hits a back elbow instead of giving a clean break but Mero replies with a sunset flip. Both competitors go for pin attempts and Stone Cold ends up taking a drop kick. Austin goes to the outside for a breather and when he comes back to the ring, Pillman goes from implying that Brett's going to show up at In Your House to guaranteeing it. Bret Hart did not show up at In Your House Mind Games and this kind of blatant bullshit to get people to buy a pay-per-view is pretty low but not surprising either. As Mero applies a head scissors and he and Austin go through more quick pin attempts, Jim Ross says the Triple H and Mr. Perfect were fighting backstage and they've been separated. We go to commercial break and when we come back, Mero gets nailed with a stun gun and Stone Cold goes to the middle rope only to miss an elbow drop. Mero is able to follow up with a clothesline in the corner and Austin manages to escape the dreaded 10 punches. Austin ends up taking a backdrop and Kevin Kelly reminds us that Stone Cold wants a match with Bret Hart in the future. Really, the whole conversation at the commentary desk is all about the hitman. A double axe handle only gets Mero a two count. Steve Austin then throws Mero out of the ring and when the white man tries to get back inside, Stone Cold throws the referee in front of his opponent. The bell rings and we have a DQ finish. Mark Mero advances in the IC title tournament. Steve Austin hits a Stone Cold stunner after the bell but Mero comes right back at Stone Cold. Officials hit the ring to break the two men up. The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. Hollywood Hogan is cutting another NWO promo and Hogan says the New World Order doesn't have to hide in the shadows anymore now that they've got the NWO belt. Hogan kicks an inflatable globe at the camera while saying the New World Order are the champions of the world. And yeah, this isn't going to go anywhere, is it? Hulk said the giant cried when he lost the WCW belt and Hulk then shows us one of his old t-shirts. It looks like an absolute bootleg, but anyway. Hulk spreads out the WCW logo while saying that WCW stands for World Crybaby Wrestlers. The wit of Hulk Hogan is absolutely unmatched. Hogan then shows us his sick lyrical skills by saying, at war games, Sting will be stung, Luger will be hung, <laughs> Flair won't even be there, and Arn won't be Arn anymore. <laughs> he was doing fairly well until he came to double A. Luger being hung is also a bit iffy, but we don't call him the total package for nothing. Hulk makes fun of Team WCW by mocking their little get together a few weeks ago on Nitro, and Hogan ends the promo by saying again that anything less would be too civilized. I said this before, but Hogan's delivery of heel promos was so much more fun to watch than the usual babyface stuff that he'd been doing for years. He's not much of a songwriter, but give him credit, he plays a good heel. Difficult choice to make here, but I'm giving the point to Raw. Mero vs Austin was solid enough, and if I had to recommend which segment to watch here, I'd choose the Raw match. We have a Mark Henry promo in a Mankind match next on Raw, while WCW Nitro presents Ron Studd vs Randy Savage. Mark Henry looks pleased to be on Raw, while Jerry Lawler is too busy making fun of the Olympic powerlifter. The King takes a little time to rip into Jake Roberts before announcing that Mark Henry has signed a WWF contract. Even without wrestling a single match, Mark Henry is part of the WWF locker room. This was true by the way, Henry's first match would be against Lawler on the 21st of September at a house show in Baltimore, the night before Man Games. We see clips of Henry saving Roberts at SummerSlam and we see that big lovely smile he gave Vader a few weeks back 
it's so warm and nice. Henry says that there's people he isn't too fond of in the World Wrestling Federation, and those people include Jerry Lawler and the man they call Vader. Jerry Lawler challenges Henry to a match, and Henry says he isn't ready for a wrestling match just yet. But there will be a day when Henry steps into the ring with Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry taunts Mark, and rightfully so, why the fuck did they announce that Mark Henry signed a WWF deal only to immediately follow up with, I'm not ready to wrestle? Lawler calls Henry a chicken and Mark grabs the king. Mark quickly changes his mind and the match is made official. Jerry Lawler vs Mark Henry will happen at Mind Games. Mankind then does battle with Alex the Pug Porto. And here's some trivia for you. Alex Porto was one of the many doppelganger John Cena's at WrestleMania 25. Absolutely useless trivia, but trivia nonetheless. Alex was used as a job guy during this time period, and this match here is absolutely no exception. But what's noteworthy here is that Jim Ross finally makes his big announcement. Jim has information from some very reliable sources that Razor Ramon and Big Daddy Cool Diesel are on their way back to the World Wrestling Federation. That's right, seemingly Nash and Hall have quit WCW and the NWO to come back to the World Wrestling Federation, at least according to Jim Ross. <laughs> this is going to get really stupid really soon. As Mankind destroys his opponent in the ring, JR reiterates that Diesel and Razor are coming back. Foley begins pulling out his own hair as the pug dangles out of the ring. Paul Bears just like, I don't know what the hell's going on, but I like it. Mankind hits a swinging neckbreaker as Jim Ross tells us that a young Olympic gold medalist by the name of Kurt Angle had a meeting in Stamford this week, and Mr. Angle was a fine young gentleman. So think about that for a moment. The WWF had the chance to secure Kurt Angle in the summer of 1996, just after the Olympics, but they failed to do so initially. The company also just announced that they're throwing an inexperienced Mark Henry into the ring without his training being complete. So it kind of leads us to believe that if Kurt Angle signed here in 96, he would have been working inside a WWF ring on TV by mid-1997 if he got the same treatment as Mark Henry. Those Bret Hart vs Kurt Angle dream matches could have been a real possibility, especially seeing as Hart would be doing the whole pro-Canadian thing that same year. Oh yeah, Mankind won with the mandible claw by the way, the stuff talked about on commentary was way more interesting than the action inside the ropes. The Randy Savage vs Big Ron stud match starts off with Ron overpowering the Macho Man and Savage taking a few big clubbing blows to the back. Ron hoists the Macho Man up in the air and you expect to see a big slam, but he just kinda lets go before talking smack to the referee. The NWO are then shown emerging from their limousine, but when they see the cameraman, they quickly close the limo and they chase him away. Hall, Nash and Hogan are hiding someone inside that vehicle. Ron Studd then tries to launch Savage out of the ring, but referee Randy Anderson jumps on the ropes, and it really looks like our ref here wants the Macho Man's head shoved straight, <laughs> shoved straight up his asshole. Snap into it, Randy Anderson. Stud hits a body slam instead, but he only gets a two count. Stud argues with the referee, and <laughs> this is just awful, isn't it? Stud gets thrown out of the ring, and Savage gets in his first bit of offense, a double axe handle from the top rope to the outside. Savage hits a body slam back inside the ring, we then see the elbow drop, and it's all over. Three moves of doom from the Macho Man Randy Savage, what a bad, bad match this was. No points for either show here, I'm not giving Raw points just for having interesting commentary. Mean Gene then interviews Savage afterwards, Okerlund reminds Savage that he has the giant at Fall Brawl and Savage also has Hulk Hogan at Halloween Havoc. Savage says he wishes Halloween Havoc was tonight because he guarantees he's going to beat up Hollywood and take everything away from him. Mean Gene asks Savage about his current mental state and Savage says if you're not living on the edge then you're taking up too much room. Savage says that he loves the pressure and he's guaranteeing victory against both Hulk Hogan and the Giant on pay per view. Both men will melt when the heat of the Macho Man brings them all the way down. 
Sting and Lex Luger take on Rick and Scott Steiner next on Nitro, while the WWF give us clips from the Canadian National Fair, along with the Bob Backlund promo. Okay, so why do you need to see footage from the Canadian National Fair? What could possibly happen at a fair that would entertain you, the fan of professional wrestling? Well, if I said a tug of war contest between Psycho Sid and a motherfucking elephant named Angus took place, would you not be entertained? Sid vs Elephant, the WrestleMania main event we never got to see finally takes place in Toronto and Sid completely jobs to Angus, it's a total squash match but Sid then gets some help from a group of special Olympians and that elephant is put in his place. A monumental victory and I must say the elephant was more competitive than Triple H earlier in the show. We see the WWF superstars out and about during the fair, some guys like Steve Austin here would rather be anywhere than this absolute circus but it looks like a fun time was had by all. Back at the arena, Bob Backlund says he's gonna bring out a man who's gonna win the WWF title very soon but Backlund wants to introduce this new superstars trainer first and the cheeky baby himself. The Iron Sheik comes down and he talks a whole lot of shit but it's that kind of good shit and while trying to decipher Sheiky is hard enough we also get the commentary team talking over the interview and it just becomes a big old hot mess. The promo ends and Backlund doesn't even introduce his new protege so yeah that's that. Absolute mayhem on Raw guys, too much to take. Luger, Sting and Rick Steiner are in the ring ready to go but the camera cuts away to the four horsemen. Flair and company want to know who's inside that limousine but there's no one there. With their joint deduction skills, the horsemen come to the conclusion that whoever was in that limousine must now be inside the building. So they run back into the arena as Nitro takes a commercial break. We come back and we have Luger and Rick Steiner in the ring. The two men lock horns and Lex does a little flexing. The two men lock up again. Nick Patrick walks into Luger when the competitors break a lock up and Patrick calls for the bell. It's over after 38 seconds. Luger has been disqualified and the Steiners win the match. The Steiners don't want to take this victory but the decision is final. Patrick gets out of the ring. Sting and Luger follow him and that's it. That's the match. I have to give the point to Raw here, I have no other choice. WCW Nitro are completely pissing this episode away. Main event time and now I'm wondering if WCW Nitro can get a single point tonight. It's insane how bad Nitro has been this week, with the only real exception being the opening page versus right match and the Malenko vs Jericho bout. We have the Dungeon of Doom facing the four horsemen in an 8 man tag while the WWF gives us a WWF title match between Shawn Michaels and Goldust. The Undertaker cuts a split screen promo during Goldust's entrance. Goldust is gonna rest in peace after his match with the Phenom at Mind Games. Goldust tries to attack HBK as Sean's theme music continues to play in the arena, but Sean throws Goldust out of the ring twice. Michaels then does a little Goldust pose, and then we see a few little pictures from HBK's Playgirl magazine photo shoot. Ooh la la. Old HBK would get quite a lot of flack for this over the years but what's funny here is that Jim Ross was obviously told to say that some WWF officials are unhappy with this photo shoot. I'm calling bullshit on that one, I bet Vince McMahon loved every moment of it and if people were annoyed about it then it wouldn't be getting advertised on WWF Raw. Jim Ross also says that the magazine is for adults only by the way, just thought I'd let you know. The two competitors fight on the outside and Sean throws Goldust back into the ring before going for a double axe handle. Goldust has it scouted and Michaels takes a hit but Sean is then able to mount Goldust for a few punches in the corner. HBK does a backflip off Goldust and a hip toss gets delivered. The bizarre one comes right back with a grounded uppercut. Goldust drops Sean on the top rope and HBK goes up and over after getting whipped in the corner. HBK then gets dropped across the guardrail before Marlena blows cigar smoke on HBK's face. Sean acts like the smoke has blinded him while Goldust stays on top of the heartbreak kid. A suplex brings Sean back into the ring just before we take a commercial break. Goldust then applies a chin lock as mankind is seen watching the match backstage. Foley says he has a surprise for Sean so expect a run in very soon. 
Jim Ross continues to talk about the return of Razor Ramon and Diesel on commentary as Goldust wrenches on Sean's neck. HBK fights out and he goes for a roll up but Goldust holds onto the ropes resulting in both men taking each other out with a double clothesline. They both take a little time before getting back to their feet and HBK is able to hit his flying forearm after trading punches with his opponent. A body slam from Shawn Michaels gets followed up with a crossbody but Goldust rolls through. It only gets a two count as Raw takes its final commercial break. The moment we come back, HBK hits his diving elbow drop. Sean warms up the band but Marlena causes a distraction. This leads to Goldust taking advantage and going for a curtain call but Michaels manages to counter it. Sean rushes to the turnbuckles and he feigns a jump. HBK climbs to the top and we see a moonsault. 1, 2, 3, Sean wins via pinfall and it was good to see no interference during this bout. Mankind does run down after the final bell but Michaels gets out of the ring. Raw then goes off the air and yeah, nothing to complain about here. It was a decent match though nothing special. The Dungeon of Doom vs The Horseman then and trying to write a script based on tag matches like this is always a nightmare so I'll go through some high spots or low spots as the case may be. Mongo has now main evented two nitros in a row guys, outstanding and lucky for us Mongo is starting things off with Kevin Sullivan. Mongo McMichael gets taken down hard by Kevin Sullivan and McMichael <laughs> and as we look on Mongo getting it ready to unload. Nobody. <laughs> Glacier's number one enemy, Big Bubba, comes in and he doesn't give Mongo a chance to mess things up any further. Or so we thought. Mongo brings Bubba to the outside and he delivers an atomic drop, a move that hurts just as much inside the ring as it does on the outside. And Mongo thankfully hits a back body drop with no issues, the big man wasn't having a great night here. The Barbarian and Chris Benoit traded some hard knife edge chops next and Chris hits a German suplex in the corner. And as Chris hits his diving headbutt, Bischoff announces that Sting and Luger are having some trouble backstage. We assume it's an NWO attack but just wait and see. The crowd goes wild when Ric Flair gets tagged in. We see footage of Flair and Luger chasing Nick Patrick. Nick lures Sting and Luger towards the limousine and we see Ted DiBiase getting into the vehicle. Sting wants to commit murder so he throws a fucking rock through the window. But then it gets better. Our babyface heroes steal a police car to chase the NWO. Sting and Luger may have just saved Nitro from a complete beating from the WWF. Ming and Ric Flair are beating the hell out of each other. We all thought Ming was a hard man but one woo from nature boy Ric Flair makes Ming back up. The nature boy then goes on a low blow spree and then we see a cop outside. The cop is calling for backup. Manliest of men, Arn Anderson and Ming then went toe to toe and Arn hit a DDT that didn't finish the match off. There was this dodgy looking back body drop but still, the manliness levels were through the roof here on Monday Nitro. We go to a commercial break and when we come back we get treated to Kevin Sullivan and Chris Benoit beating the hell out of each other. Ming comes back into the match and he totally shows Mongo how an atomic drop is supposed to be delivered, poor poor Steve McMichael. Benoit also takes a thunderous powerbomb from the Barbarian and Ric Flair tries to help out his fellow horsemen on the outside when things break down. Eventually it ends up being a story of Chris Benoit needing to make a tag. He takes a beating from all four of his opponents but a double diving headbutt from the faces of fear give Benoit an opening. Ric Flair gets tagged in and he wipes out everyone. The match then breaks down but Flair manages to lock in the figure four. It looks like woman hesitates in helping Flair but Benoit screams at her to give the assist. She locks hands with the nature boy and Kevin Sullivan gives up. There's an argument between Benoit and woman on the outside but there's no time to focus on this. The new world order have showed up and they're also extremely outnumbered here. Three guys versus eight and somehow the NWO get the upper hand. The giant comes down to make the save, he sizes up the new world order and then the big man delivers choke slams to Ming and the barbarian before hugging Kevin Nash in the middle of the ring. 
The Giant is now officially part of the New World Order, and the days of the NWO being a trio are now officially over. And you know how everyone says that the NWO was best when it was just Hall, Nash and Hogan? Well, you've sat through it all just like me and there was, what, only five matches featuring the NWO in the past three months? Randy Savage hits the ring and he manages to take out Hall, Nash and the Giant, but Hulk Hogan gets the better of Savage with a low blow. The Macho Man takes a chokeslam followed by some of those incredibly brutal Hulk Hogan chair shots. Savage takes three leg drops from the Hulkster and then Hogan sprays a yellow streak down the Macho Man's back. And the NWO once again take over the commentary table before we go off the air. The Giant says that Ted DiBiase called him to talk business. The Giant flew to Florida to the home of Hulk Hogan, where the Giant saw Hulk's motorbikes and cars. In the middle of this tale, the NWO have to take care of the horsemen in the Dungeon of Doom, but the Giant's little story continues on afterwards. Hulk then interrupts the Giant, saying that the Giant can get some movie work thanks to Hulk Hogan. And then, the giant tries once again to tell his story, but Hulk pushes the table down and the giant just gives up. It's absolutely hilarious. You can see the giant is pissed off too. He started and stopped and started and stopped and it just came off really bad. In short, the giant sold out to the NWO. That's all you need to know. The final point goes to Monday Nitro. The ending of the main event was very standard, but a whole lot of chaos and a whole lot of fun. The roles have been reversed, the tables have been turned. Raw has a better mid-card week than Nitro, but somehow Nitro has a more action-packed main event, even beating a Shawn Michaels match, which I think is a first here on Reliving the War. Raw still wins this week though, meaning our scores are 17 points to Raw, 24 points to Nitro, and we've had 6 ties. Nitro scored a massive 4.3, while the Championship Friday episode of Raw scored a 3.4. Keep in mind too that these shows were on different days. Next week we are back to Monday Night Head to Head action. The Undertaker is in our Raw main event, while Team WCW gets thrown into turmoil on Monday Nitro. I hope you come back for the next episode, thank you for watching and take care.